Hello and welcome to this Getting to Know the Specification T-Level Technical Qualification in Digital Production, Design and Development, the Occupational Specialism event. During this video, we will cover an overview of the T-Level Technical Qualification in Digital Production, Design and Development structure. We'll take a high level look at the Occupational Specialism component content, and we'll take a high level look at the Occupational Specialist component assessment. This slide contains an overview of the technical qualification, or the TQ for short. The TQ is split into two components, the core and the occupational specialism. The core is 600 guided learning hours and has three assessments. There is get, uh, getting to know the specification specifically for the core component, and this is available to watch on demand via our website. There is one occupational specialism, digital production, design and development. This is 600 guided learning hours and is assessed through the Occupational Specialism project. For this particular TQ, your students must undertake the core component and the Occupational Specialism. The core and the Occupational Specialism components can be delivered however you feel is best for your students, including the integration of their interest replacement and access to expertise and resources at your centre. For example, you could cover the core component in what year one, and the occupational specialism in year two, or both components at the same time or staggered. So the core starts first, then dual teaching, and then finishing off with the occupational specialism. The choice is totally yours. For more information on delivery, make sure you attend our Getting Ready to Teach events. The aim of the rest of this session is to give you an introduction to the digital production design and development occupational specialism. We'll take a look at how the component is laid out in the specification and an overview of the assessment structure for the specialism. The digital production, design and development occupational specialism has six performance outcomes, or POs for short. You will see in the specification there are eight knowledge or skill statements your students must achieve. In the main, they're identical to the performance outcomes you'll see here on screen except for PO2. In the specification, this has been split into three. Design, implement a solution using two appropriate languages, and test a software solution. For each performance outcome, it's broken down into several skill statements. These are what your students are expected to be able to do or demonstrate. There's also a number of underpinning knowledge statements. These are what your students need to know and understand in order to demonstrate these skills. This is an example of how the specification is laid out. This shows the part of the performance outcome one, be able to analyze a problem to define requirements and acceptance criteria aligned to user needs. At the very top, under what students need to learn, you'll see the first knowledge or skill statement for the PO. In this instance, it's PO 1.1, understand the stages of software development lifecycle and be able to apply the, them to digital projects. One, because this is the performance outcome one, and point one, because this is the first specialist skill within performance outcome. Now we'll break down the skill further. Here you can see the first part of this breakdown, life cycle stage, research and familiarization. In the specification, you'll see that PO1 is actually broken down into seven parts. Each of these parts are then broken down again into several bullets and sub bullets, giving you an elaborated content for each part of the knowledge or skill statement that makes up each performance outcome. In the right hand column, we've included the skills from the general competency framework for your students will need to have the opportunity to demonstrate through this knowledge and skills covered in this performance outcome. You will see E1, E2, M2, D2, etc. These reference the English, maths and digital skills from the framework. You will find a full list of the competencies at the front of the specification. There is one single synoptic assessment for this special, occupational specialism, which is an extended design, development and implementation project that is set and marked by Pearson. The synoptic element of the project is important to ensure students can demonstrate threshold points and able to evidence all the skills required by the performance outcomes. Your students will undertake the project under supervised assessment conditions. The assessments will take place over multiple sessions 
up to a combined duration of 67 hours. The project consists of several activities grouped into three substantive tasks, which total 145 marks and will be awarded at pass, merit or distinction. Each task will be completed either at a date or time set by person, or during a window, again set by person, during which you can schedule the supervised assessment sessions. We will take a look at indicative assessment schedule in a few slides time. The project will present the students with tasks that emulate activities undertaken in workplace situations. There will be an overarching narrative linking the tasks together. The overarching scenario will always be designed around a scenario in which the students will be working with it within the industry. The scenario will focus on at least two different types of organisations uh, and they will need to relate their knowledge over the period of time um, to ensure that they, they uh, approach the scenario as they move through the tasks. This is a substantial project and the tasks are mapped against the different performance outcomes. Your students will be assessed on the application of the skills listed in the performance outcomes, but they will not be assessed against specific knowledge outcomes. Instead, they will be expected to draw on and apply underpinning knowledge when applying the skills in response to the activities in the tasks. The project's outcomes will consist of a portfolio of evidence submitted either electronically or as hard copy. You will need to refer to the individual task guidance included within the assessments for further information on how to facilitate each task and how to collate and submit evidence. In the next slides, we'll look at the structure of the project and in a little more detail at the tasks. Now we'll have a look at the tasks that make up the project. There will be one occupational specialism project series per academic year. This is due to the amount of content and synopticity required as a result of the linear assessment model. To give you as much teaching time as possible, but avoiding ESP windows, the core examination dates should, um, so as not to disadvantage students needing it to access resets, the project will take place over several weeks across the spring and summer terms. The assessment window is set by Pearson and the date of the assessment window will be published in the key date schedule. This is published annually and is located on the digital TQ page. On the screen is an example of a timetable that will give you a notional view of how the tasks are intended to be organised. However, please note this example is indicative and adjustments may be made in live delivery to account for variables such as changeable dates of Easter and the placement of school and bank holidays. As you can see, the tasks have been spread over 11 weeks. All of the tasks are scheduled by you within the permitted window of the task. This is to support manageability within your centre and to allow students for, to benefit from access arrangements, especially additional time, to complete their windows without tasks overlapping. This ensures that this is, there is space, even for those students who are permitted to make significant amounts of extra time, to complete the assessments in the intended order, with no impact on future sessions. Where students suffer from illness during the assessment, the student will be able to complete the assessment at a different time to the remainder of the cohort, as long as this takes place within the allowable window. If the student is too unwell to attempt the task at all within the window, they will apply for special consideration. So what's next? Firstly, familiarise yourself with the specification and specimen assessment materials. Also make sure that you receive our monthly T-level e-bulletin. Book on to getting ready to teach and getting ready to assess events. Watch the admin support videos on our private provider page and make use of the course materials available on the website. There are a number of ways you can contact us, either online, email or by post. The most direct method is via the person support portal. Thank you for listening to this information video. I hope you found it useful. Please remember to take advantage of our Getting Ready to Teach and Getting Ready to Assess events. And don't forget to sign up to receive our monthly T-level e-bulletins.